Good morning, folks. Today we'll be going over expected storm development in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico, eye candy from James Webb, the SWAT satellite, and an extreme star in the galaxy. But we're starting with the last 24 hours on the sun, and we find that we had a few small M-class solar flares. There's crackling at several different active regions, including what looks like more coming from over the limb. Solar wind and geomagnetic conditions should be mostly quiet today, but we are firmly on eruption watch due to the sunspots. Big ones departing to the right, new group growing to the left on the south, but north of that are two more established sunspots, one has already fired X-class flares. And we'll zoom in on the leading group of the two active regions on the north there. It has delta magnetic potential where the blue and red opposing polarities meet. That is the number one indicator of flare potential, so we'll be watching that closely today, as well as monitoring the various plasma filaments, some big ones there turning through, and they are also an eruption threat in addition to the sunspot flares. Let's go next to tropical development, and it's the southern area in the Caribbean that is most concerning. Let's watch the forecasted action over the next several days, and we find it organizing and tightening up dramatically south of Cuba, then crossing the island and heading into the Gulf of Mexico. Early forecasts often change quite a bit by the time the storm develops, but this certainly needs to be monitored closely in the days ahead. Could have another system creeping towards the coastlines here. Up next, Let's get some eye candy from James Webb and Hubble. These galaxies are best friends, can't separate them. Close looks show that their arms are tangled up with each other. The gorgeous display here is a combination of visible and infrared light from dust, which really highlights the details of those spiral arms. Perhaps most interestingly is how these galaxies have opposite spins, one clockwise, one counterclockwise. Up next, we've got SWAT imagery pulled from during that Greenland tsunami, the one caused by a landslide that sloshed back and forth for nine days. They went back and pulled this data showing the moment amidst the slosh where the wave was at the northern coast and the low water area was on the south. Lastly, on the article front, we're finding a pulsar that is on the extreme end of the scale. It has extreme magnetic and electric fields and spins 716 times per second. That's a lot of motion. Pulsars whip around so quickly that electrons and positrons are ripped into the surrounding fields and hurled off into space. This example is causing easily noticeable perturbations in the local area. Folks, in the last 48 hours, we finally got a lot of the questions I was kind of expecting to get weeks ago. What exactly are these mini-conferences we're having at Observer Ranch, like the one we're having today? It's an all-day event. We have introductions to space weather, solar forcing of weather, earthquakes, biology, and technology, an introduction to catastrophism, the ongoing magnetic pole shift, and then advanced catastrophism, everything needed to be a Tier 1 expert on the magnetic pole shift. Q&As as well. Next one will be November 30th, and after that will be 2025. And for those looking to come out to the ranch, it's that time of year when the winter rates hit the campgrounds around the country. Come see us. We're eager to create prepared minds and shake respected hands. ObserverRanch.com We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.